is. Let's get to security because the Ghana Police Service has expressed outrage at what it calls an unfortunate statement made by Deputy Commissioner of Police Gabriel Prince Wabu during the launch of Joint Issues Election 2024 comprehensive coverage. The DCOP indicated that the military will not be involved in the security operations in the 2024 elections. But the Ghana Police Service in a release says what the Deputy Commissioner of Police stated did not represent the views of the Ghana Police Service. Before we bring you the statement from the Ghana Police Service, let's bring you exactly what DCOP Gabriel Wabo said. The sensitization is ongoing. Uh, we and the sister security, uh, that is the prisons, the fire, immigration, all are on the table. They are all doing what they can do to uh, finish. Training is ongoing, vigorous training, of course. Uh, equipment have been uh, gotten, and uh, as of now, we still have even recruits under training, and all is geared towards. Uh, 2024 elections. And I tell you what, officers of uh, probably 300 are going to go to the college and they would definitely pass out before 2024 elections. So these are some of the ways and then the measures that we have put in place to, you know, uh, see to it that 2024 election uh, becomes a success. Mm. Apart yeah, from yeah, that, yeah. Opia, I mean, you're talking about training and all, but. Um, mm for many Ghanaians also, learning from what happened in 2020, where some Ghanaians lost their lives during the elections, they would want to know, what is it that the Ghana Police Service has put in place to ensure that not one person loses his life during this election period? Yeah, just as I said, if you looked at 2023, the elections that we conducted all, you could see that all were incident-free. Mm -hmm. This is the status, and we have learned out of it we have taken notes out of it, and so we know where we are moving What forward. have you learned out of these? Like uh, how we organize it, how we organize all those elections that within uh, last year, and whatever happened in 2022, a lesson has been learned out of it. We're not maybe going to involve the military as it were, because it was not even the police that you know, came out with this issue. So... Uh, it's, it's going to be only the uh, military, I mean the police, the prisons, the fire, and then immigration. That is going to conduct these elections. They are going to support us. It is our baby. It is the police baby, but we want to <laughs> co opt in our sister security to assist in one way or the other. Has that been sorted out, though, that when it comes to elections, you are the primary security agency? And in fact, in the coordination process, you will have to request if you need additional support. And, and we don't have a situation where we have the military going into a place and creating this tension that we see sometimes uh, that then leads to violence. And then the police is how are responsible. But there's a, there's a military uh, that has been deployed sometimes without your knowledge. And I'm saying this on the back of Ayawaso West Wagon. And when the commission work was done, it was streamlined with the police being the arrowhead. Has that been sorted out for this year? That has been sorted out by the Inspector General of Police with his Puma members. And it's a clear cut issue. Every internal issue is the police duty. And that is uh, for sure. Uh, in place, so we don't have any uh, tender we need to maybe recall the past when it comes to this year's elections. Well, in a statement issued by the Ghana Police Service, the service has distanced itself from the statement made by uh, uh, the DCOP Wabu. And I'll share excerpts of that statement with you. It says the attention of the Ghana Police Service has been drawn to an unfortunate statement made by DCOP Gabriel Wabu during a panel discussion on joint news uh, on Monday. The statement made by DCOP 
concerning election security are unfounded and do not represent the position of the Ghana Police Service. We would therefore like to dissociate the service completely from the statement and apologize to the Ghana Armed Forces. The conduct of the officer is being subjected to internal disciplinary processes of the Ghana Police Service. We want to state that under the National Election Security Task Force architecture, the Ghana Police Service works with all other security services, including the Ghana Armed Forces, to ensure peace, security, law and order before, during and after elections. The approach to the 2024 general elections will not be different. Now, the Ghana Police Service wishes to appeal to the general public to continue to support us and other sister security agencies as we work together to deepen our democratic values during the 2024 elections and beyond. And it's signed by Assistant Commissioner of Police, Director of Public Affairs, Grace Sansa Akrofi. I've been joined on the line by Dr. Adam Bonner, who is a security analyst. On the other line is Professor Enim. He is also a security expert from the uh, he's a security expert. He's also joining us for this conversation. Let me start with you, Mr. Adam Bonner. First, uh, whose duty is it for uh, security to be provided? Um, in, in, in the event of elections, I mean, as captured in the country's national security strategy. Well, yeah, good morning to you, good morning to your listeners, and also uh, good morning to my brother, Officer. Well, I would say that uh, for internal security, and um, all about internal security, the foremost uh, security organization that must uh, deal with it is the police. And so, uh, and that also includes election, elections and elections uh, related activities. And so, as far as uh, I am concerned, and as far as our regulations and the constitution is concerned, uh, internal security uh, is, is something that the police must lead. And so I would say that uh, election is a matter of internal security, but that notwithstanding, when it comes to general elections, you will realize that uh, the police is usually overstretched. And if you look at the police citizen ratio, at the moment uh, we should be doing about probably one to about 850 per uh, citizen. And if you look at how many constituencies and how many electoral areas we have. And the flash point, generally, the police alone cannot go. It's the reason why they would usually, uh, as a convention, roll in other social security agencies, the, the immigration, fire, prisons, and all the others, and including the military. But some of us uh, from uh, civil society, some of us from academia, some of us from you know, ordinary citizens, have raised issues with the work of the military, especially when we have had challenges, especially uh, in election-related violence that the military themselves were involved by our forest work on the dry and other places. And we have suggested and actually uh, attempted to reaffirm the fact that the military is the, the last bastion when it comes to uh, internal security. So we should not usually put them uh, in the front line. Let's let you know get them to be on standby. If probably things go uh, go out of hand, then we can rope them in. But in most cases, we bring them in together with the other agencies. And when issues happen, it becomes uh, a blame game. And you, you and I know that you don't deploy the military without firearms. And when you deploy the military with firearms, you don't give them blunt bullets or rubber bullets. You have to give them light bullets. And when they come under threat, we know in the Adra uh, hearing, uh, the, the CEO, one of the commanders who was caught, actually said that they don't have riot control gear. It means that if you deploy the military during the election, and uh, you probably are not tactical enough, and you know people begin to riot, and they have their firearms, chances are that they might shoot at them because they are not trained to deal with riot, rioters. They don't have riot gear and all that. And so uh, some of us have asked that 
the use of the military, we need to be more strategic, not put them in the front line, let them be on standby. When things are going out of hand, then we bring them in. And so if you ask me, I would say that uh, the, the police statement, I think it's not uh, what Wabo said, uh, the POP Wabo said, it's not the official position uh, of the police. I think so, uh, they are statements. But some of us, it's something that some of us are saying, the deployment of the military in civilian populated area, we need to gradually do away uh, with that mentality because it is not helping uh, develop our democracy. In 2024 elections, uh, it's going to be tension packed, and we, so we need to be more strategic, actually. Um, on the other side is Professor Kwesi Enin, who has also joined us. Prof, I mean, uh, listening to uh, Dr. Adam Bonna and also from what we've read from the security uh, strategy of the country, isn't the DCOP stating the obvious that election security is a sole duty for the police and not the military? Well, I think it is the military, it, it is the, the Ghana police that is, that is the lead agent. But it is always a collaborative venture. Um, so, if you remember how the, the election security framework looks like, every single statutory security institution is part of that framework with the Ghana Police Service in the lead. Because in almost all elections, we need the first the immigration, customs, and prisons help or support the police in providing security at all the X number of thousands of uh, police. The military is the platform to be able to deal with situations when they get out of hand. And I think it is crucial in the last couple of elections that the Ghana Police Service has formed its skills in First, in terms of identifying, you know, the, the uh, polling stations and the constituencies that may have been difficult, um, and then together with the intelligence, they find means and means of responding to those and preventing them from getting out of hand. So the statement that the police will be in the lead and the military will not be part of it. I think they didn't just count well. But for election security, it is a collaborative framework in which the Ghana Police Service is the lead agent. Okay, so that, that means that um, at any point in time, there could be the need for other security agencies to uh, um, offer a hand to the Ghana Police. But it's their sole duty to produce uh, to, to provide security during elections. But over the period, um, is that what has happened? Because we've always seen the military involved in elections. No, the military must show presence. But a distance presence, that sends a signal to potential trouble makers. Now look, we are here. The essence of that operational strategy is to create a secure environment so that all people can go out there and go. And it is critical that the signal is sent uh, that you are safe, you are secure, that you can go, go home, come back and witness the counting, and you can rejoice, and no one is going to attack you. So all the hula balloo that we hear now, you know, the threat that people are filming themselves on TikTok and sending it, it becomes critical that the, that the statutory agency, security agency, indicate that they have the capacity to deal with all the potential trouble making. So if you remember, just a couple of days ago, there was some clown somewhere around Kumasi or you know, who made it you know, TikTok, saying that you will kill people or uh, there will be war. You see, in every responsible society, you cannot have people, because we are having an election, 
making videos of themselves and threatening war under the constitution. It is only the person invested with the power to declare war who must do that. Individual citizens under no circumstances can threaten war. You know, so the combination or the support of the Ghana Armed Forces and also in showing presence it is very key. But I agree with my brother Adam uh, uh, that riot control is the prerogative of the Ghana State except in the situations when it gets out, absolutely out of control. Then once more, we need the armed forces to uh, But if you cross the line, irrespective of who you are, you must be dealt with. I'm grateful for your time. Professor Kwesini is a security aspect, and Dr. Adam Warner is also a security analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. Now.